What's up YouTube? My name is Marvin Aziz. I'm a freelance developer and today I want to show you how to create that sticky on scroll effect. As soon as you scroll down the page, one element sticks to one corner of the page while the other elements are scrolling through. So without further ado, let's get into the flow. So, as you can see, I'm currently in the designer and there's not much in there, right? So I've got a NAV wrapper. That's basically it. Um, it's a very basic one, just a logo and um, some menu links you can click. Also, I added a little blur effect, which you won't see right now because it's all black in the background. But as soon as there's something in the background, um, especially when it's moving, you can see a bit blurry behind. First thing I want to do is actually add a div. So I'm hitting Command E and adding a new div block and I'm going to call it um, page wrapper and I want it to be relative right and in there I'm going to add an image okay and that image is going to be this one right here and I am going to call it um, fixed image And I want it to be a full width, so 100 viewport width and full height. So um, the full height of the viewport um, screen, right? So viewport height, VH. So as you can tell, it's currently stretching that image, which I don't like. So I'm going to use, instead of fill, um, I'm going to use cover over here. This is way more beautiful. And now you can actually notice the blur effect in the background on, on top of the nav, right? Uh, below the nav. So, um, but I'd like the image to be fixed on the top of the screen. So I'm going to use position fixed and I want it to be on the top, right? So basic setup. All right, so within that page wrapper, I'm going to hit again, Command E and add a new div. And this one I'm going to call grid wrapper. Okay. Uh, instead of display, I want it to be um, a grid with columns and rows. It's just easier for me now to um, arrange things within there. Um, so I'm going to delete one row. We actually only need two of them and you can like you can adjust the the gap in between like that or right here. I'm going to give it a 20 pixel gap and that's pretty much it. Click done. And within the first um, column, I'm going to add another div block. And this one I'm going to call left wrapper. Also, I'd like to I like it to be positioned relative, so that I am able to um, position things within absolute. And now I'm going to basically add a, an helper div, which is going to help me position the images on the left side. So another div block, call it. I don't know, image, helper, wrapper. I'm really bad at naming. So this is not, this is definitely not good naming. I would spend some time in a proper project um, to actually think of good names and um, give them really good classes. So for other developers and for myself later on um, to be able to get a hang of it, right? Um, so within that image wrapper, I'm going to add another element. It's going to be an image and the first one is going to be uh, that one. Okay. And I'm going to give it another class, which is going to be um, image sticky. Okay. Because that's supposed to be sticky. Also, what I'd like to do is um, the image helper wrapper to be um, display flex and position the image in the middle. Maybe add a little top margin of 20, 20 VH. 
Yeah, that looks fine to me. So I'm going to copy and paste that image. And I want all of them to be positioned absolute. So now they are stacked on each other. We've got three images. Um, I'm going to call the second one second and the third one with a combo class of third. And to get that stack effect, I'm just going to position them slightly different. Right, so the first one, um, no, the second one is going to be like, it's, it's got a different padding than the rest. It's like a bit more here, a bit more there. Third one also. Yeah, that's okay for now. And now I'm going to replace two of those images. Now this one is a bit too low because it's bigger than the other ones. So I'm simply going to remove that top padding, give it a little more padding to the left. Okay, so we are pretty much done with the left side. Um, what I'd like to do now is actually create another div within that grid and call it right wrapper. Within there, I want to place another div, which is going to be the content wrapper. Okay, so within there, we're gonna have a heading and a paragraph. All right, and you can't actually see them because we need to put the grid to relative so that it's on top of the image, right? Um, the heading is gonna get a class of heading. The paragraph is gonna get a class of paragraph. Just to help me for now, and don't mess up with the with the other pages. Um, it's going to be white. This is white as well, and I need some margin to the top. Okay. Also, what I'd like to do is because it's really hard to read the white text on, on, the, on the image. I'm gonna give it a little opacity because my background of the body is actually black. This way I can darken the, the image and the text is way easier to read now. And it's not so distracting. Maybe to 30%, yeah, looks nice. Cool. All right, so I want the right wrapper to be actually really really large, but before that, I'm gonna duplicate those content wrappers, right? So now we've got four. So, as you can see, this is the basic setup, right? As I'm scrolling through, there's nothing happening really. What I'd like to do is um, put the image wrapper to sticky so that it sticks to the top and as soon as I scroll down, it changes the top image, right? So the top image is going, going to lose opacity, maybe move a little to have that nice little scroll effect as well. But um, yeah, that's what we're going to do now. So I'm going to click on that image helper wrapper, weird name, um, and put it to fixed on the top left. Give it a width of 450 pixels and make sure that the images have a little padding to the left. So I just added a 10% margin to the left. Okay, so now you can already see I'm scrolling through 
and the images stay right there. Now, um, because it's ending like as soon as the last paragraph is, has ended, um, I'm gonna give the, the right wrapper a nice height, maybe of 200 VH, maybe a 250, just to give it a bit of space to actually scroll. Okay, cool. Okay, so now it's time to actually animate um, some of those images in order to get a nice little scroll effect down. Okay, so that's what we're going to do now. Um, I'm gonna click on that left wrapper because I want that, or actually I'm gonna click on that grid wrapper, okay? Because I wanna have the full height and be able to animate throughout the full height of the wrapper. So I'm gonna hit H or click on the little lightning icon on the top right corner um, to open the interactions. I'm gonna hit element trigger and I want it to animate while scrolling in view. Okay, I'm gonna create a new play scroll animation and I'm going to call it um, toggle, oops, toggle images. So now I'm going to click on that top image, create a new action, and this one is going to be an opacity animation, right? So I'm gonna drag that bottom one a bit up. I wanna actually see where the position is. So right here, if you click on um, live preview, you can see where the position of the um, scrollers right so i'm scrolling down okay it's going up so you can see it's actually starting at 33 percent which is not nice so i'm going to add a little more um, margin to the to the grid okay so now we're at 20 percent which is fine for me i'm going to drag that opacity Bottom one, um, I'm gonna give it a zero opacity down there. And this one is supposed to be at 100% until maybe 28%, I don't know. Let's see, let's actually check this out. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, as I'm scrolling down, it's like entering the, the, the heading, the first image disappears, which is looking quite nice, to be honest. Um, I'm gonna add a little movement to it, just to make it a bit more interactive. And I wanted to start at zero degrees. Oh, obviously I don't wanna target the, the grid wrap, I wanna target the image here on top. So zero degrees, I'm gonna duplicate that and I'm going to add a skew of three degrees on the X and minus three on the Y. So it gets a nice little skew effect. I'm gonna preview that. Yeah. Nice. Okay, that's for the first one. So the second one is starting right here, right? So I'm adding a new skew to that second image and it's starting with zero degrees again. But this time I wanted to go to the other side as the image before. So I had three and minus three before. This time I wanted to be minus three and three. So it goes into the opposite direction. Also, we need to actually add an opacity to bring it down to zero down here and have it at 100% still right here. Let's see if I'm actually in the right position.
Okay, first one disappears. Second one disappears. Perfect. <laughs> there we go. Okay, let's do the last one. So the last one is supposed to start skewing right here at 50%, all the way down to 78. Okay, so I'm gonna click on that one and add a skew at 49, 50%. Oops, not rotate. You can also use rotate to be honest, um, which is actually the easier way. We can, we can go there too. So um, I'm gonna use the Z rotate and rotate it just maybe six degrees this time. Oh, start at zero, obviously. Duplicate it, go to six, six degrees. But this time I wanna add a scale as well. And it's going to start with one and it's supposed to end with maybe two is a bit too much 0.4 maybe yeah and then it's supposed to disappear there we go so let's actually preview it in webflow Nice. Maybe that skew goes a little bit too much to the right, so I'm gonna adjust it with a little movement. Okay, click on that wrapper. Change the animation. Okay, so let's see how this actually looks. So you can go ahead and play around with this, right? So um, it's quite similar to my previous build, which looks like this. So a little more subtle um, and also like there's a text animation going on, if you can tell, right? So it fades in and the movements are way more subtle. And also I created a, like the stack is a bit nicer to be honest. But that was the quick version to get it, right? I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Um, I'd love to share some more videos on all things Webflow and if you haven't checked it out yet, um, make sure to check out the web to the flow blog where I post content all about Webflow and see you in the next one.